Hello everyone, this is the CircuitPython weekly meeting for April 25th, 2022. It's the time of week when we get together to talk about all things CircuitPython. I'm Jeff and I'm sponsored by Adafruit to work on CircuitPython, which as you may know is a version of Python designed to run on tiny little computers called microcontrollers. CircuitPython development is primarily sponsored by Adafruit, so if you want to support them and CircuitPython, consider purchasing your hardware from Adafruit.com. This meeting is hosted on the Adafruit Discord server. You can join anytime by going to adafru.it slash discord. We hold this meeting in the CircuitPython Dev Text channel and the CircuitPython Voice channel. This meeting typically happens on Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 a.m. Pacific, except when it coincides with the U.S. holiday. In the notes doc, there's a link to a calendar you can view online or add to your preferred calendar app. We also send notifications about upcoming meetings via Discord. If you'd like to receive these notifications, ask us to add you to the CircuitPythonistas Discord role. There is also a notes document to accompany the meeting and recording. The notes document, when you uh, read it after the fact, contains timestamps, so you can use it to skip to only the parts of the video or podcast that interests you most. The meeting tends to run 60 to 90 minutes, so we think it's handy for you to have the option to skip around. Uh, and after each meeting, we will post a link to the next meeting's notes in the CircuitPython dev channel on the Adafruit Discord. You can check the pin messages to find the latest note stock and add your notes anytime during the week before the next meeting. If you wish to participate but cannot attend, or if you don't have a mic, or for any reason prefer not to have your voice recorded, you can leave hug reports and status updates in the document and we will read it out during the meeting for you. So this meeting is held in five parts. Next up is Community News, where I'm going to take a little snapshot of the CircuitPython and Python on Hardware uh, notes from the upcoming Python on Microcontrollers newsletter. After that, we head to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka, getting a statistical overview of the whole project, a chance to look at the project by the numbers, separate for, from what we're individually up to. Then comes the participatory part. Uh, in Hug Reports, we offer the opportunity for anyone to highlight the good things that folks are doing, and we take the time to recognize the awesome folks in our community. Then we turn to status updates. Status updates is an opportunity to sync up on what we're all up to. Take a couple of minutes and talk about what you've been doing in the last week since the last meeting and what you will be working on up till the next meeting. And we also love to hear other little tidbits of what is going on in your life, so please don't hold back if you uh, have news about how it was 90 degrees on Thursday and then froze on Friday like it did here. Crazy stuff like that in the weather. It may have been Saturday, I forget which day. Uh, anyway, and then the last part, which we don't hold every time but based on need, is called In the Weeds. It's an opportunity for a more long-form discussion of anything pertaining to CircuitPython or the community. And we invite you to add those topics as soon as you become aware of them, either you know, throughout the week or um, during status updates, just whenever it becomes clear, the sooner you put that in the document, the better. And uh, while the first two interactive sessions are uh, alphabetical order, that one is first come, first serve. And that covers how the meeting will go. So I am going to switch over to the other document and head to community news. So first up, and this is a big one for me, PyCon US 2022 is this week. The event is in person with an online component from April 27th through May 5th in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, there is a website, which Foamy Guy is kindly getting the links to, thank you, um, for details about the conference and the schedule. So Katni, Melissa, and I will be attending. Um, they will be there from April 28th through May 3rd um, including the uh, Education Summit, where Katni will be giving a talk called Simplicity and Fun, Learning with CircuitPython. Then during the main portion of the event, we will be hosting a Welcome to CircuitPython mini sprint within the Open Spaces component. Um, no, I guess the Welcome to CircuitPython mini sprint is also during the pre-conference, my mistake. Then next up is the open spaces every day during the main conference where we will do a introduction to CircuitPython using the Circuit Playground Blue Fruit. The Blue Fruit boards will be provided uh, along with a few accessories to enable folks to explore CircuitPython. 
a quick start will be available as well as a series of other examples to delve into. And uh, the three of us will be coming and going from those and Katni has put together a great little uh, kind of two-page curriculum for people to learn from. Uh, then I head home, but Katni and Melissa continue through the sprints on May 2nd and 3rd, which is a great way to kind of get embedded in the development of CircuitPython, primarily through um, the libraries, but uh, we really invite you to show up and just figure out how you fit in. And yeah, I'm looking forward to hopefully meeting at least a couple of new people. So um, yeah, check out that blog post to find out a little bit more about what we're up to and, I, uh, and keep your eye on the Adafruit blog to find the time of the open spaces or look at the signage uh, within the conference. Anyway, that was a mouthful. Uh, next up, we have some software from around the web. Microbit has created a Python editor and that has released, ugh, reached beta status. Um, and so uh, the Microbit Educational Foundation is excited to announce that our new Python editor has entered its beta phase, meaning we are getting ready to release it to the community. And there are links uh, to the mailing list and the uh, support subsite. And I'll read a quote. The new editor has been built from the ground up with classroom use in mind. It aims to make text-based coding more accessible stu to students who may find it hard to engage with the subject by removing known barriers to learning. It's also designed to make computer science appeal to more diverse cohorts and hence expand their horizons. And I believe that's working with the MicroPython port for MicroBit. And then Tom's Hardware did a review of the Pimeroni Servo 2040. Um, and I'm just going to read a little bit about it here. There is a link. We tested the Servo 2040 using MicroPython and CircuitPython. Pimeroni has created a new version of its MicroPython release, which provides support for the Servo 2040. And it seems that roboticist and developer Chris Parrott has poured a lot of love into the software that supports this project. Um, and it is also backed by great documentation. And I'll talk a little bit more about the Servo 2040 later when it comes to what I've been working on. Next up, more online or more IDEs intended for classroom. The CircuitPython Online IDE has released its four classes edition. It is nearly the same online IDE as the existing CircuitPython Online IDE. However, in the, this project, teaching functions are provided. And just what those are, you can find out the full text in the newsletter. The CircuitPython Weekly Newsletter, which this has been a preview of, is a community-run newsletter emailed every Tuesday. The complete archives are at adafruitdaily.com slash category slash CircuitPython. It highlights the latest Python on hardware-related news from around the web, including CircuitPython, Python, and MicroPython development. Uh, to contribute your own news or project, Edit next week's draft on GitHub and submit a pull request with the changes. The links are in the notes document. You can also tag a tweet with hashtag CircuitPython on Twitter or email cpnews at adafruit.com. And there's a whole huge fraction of the newsletter, which is People's Projects, which I always love, but there was so much of kind of the headline stuff uh, that I didn't even get down to them today. So. Go sign up for the newsletter at adafruitdaily.com if you're not on it already, and check out those projects. It I I just love seeing them every week that I run the uh, that I run the, the meeting. I get so excited by <laughs> by what's in there. But uh, that wraps it up. Uh, just a hat tip to Anne. Thanks for keeping the wheels on this thing and making a great um, newsletter every week. So that brings us to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. And I'm going to give you an overall um, kind of pulse and then hand it off to some others to get a little more specific. So overall, um, we had 30 pull requests merged from 20 authors. Um, there are some names that are new to me or don't show up a whole often. And I will just uh, kind of go through a few of them now. I apologize because I'm going to pronounce some of these wrong. Um, anyway, Stone Hippo, Zhu Hao. Bill Van Leeuwen 424, Mark Singh TW, and Uron Sayaband are some uh, names I didn't recognize. And also Nerd Cornet, um, I think may also be another new or newer contributor. So thank you to all 20 of those authors, most of whom are outside of Adafruit. So, um, you know, if you're, um, 
able to help us make the software work better for everybody. We really appreciate that, and we couldn't do it without you. Reviewer-wise, we had six reviewers, and um, thanks to all those folks, um, and thanks to people um, who also just comment on uh, pull requests and on issues and help us find the information that we need um, so that we can resolve the problem or implement an improvement, uh, whether you're formally recognized as a reviewer or not. And finally, issues-wise, we were on a real downtrend with 25 closed issues by 11 people while we had just nine issues open by seven people. And I asked Dan earlier if he would uh, update us on what's going on in the core of CircuitPython. So go ahead, Dan. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Okay, in the past, since the last meeting, uh, we've had 14 pull requests merged by 13 authors, and there were three reviewers. Um, Scott is out on a, um, paternity leave, so uh, we are, Jeff and I are doing a lot of the reviewing, and thank you, Gambler21, for doing some reviewing also. There are 17 open pro requests. Some of these are drafts and are in process. There aren't too many that are really stalled, which is good. There were seven closed issues by four people and three opened by two people, so we did have a small uh, net improvement. That's great. There are 523 open issues. Um, and in of those 523, uh, there are the 72.x uh, milestone has zero open issues. We don't Unless there's some new showstopper issue that comes up, we probably will not issue another 7.2x release. There are nine open issues that we hope to fix for 7.3.0 final release. There are 29 issues we hope to fix by the end of the 7 series. There are 12 issues open for 8, which those are all deferred until 8 happens, because usually because they're incompatibilities of some kind between major versions. We've got 19 open issues that pertain to libraries, and we've got 455 long-term issues, which are things that we might get to. There are suggestions or enhancements and sometimes bugs. And there's one open issue on support, and we have negative two issues. Maybe that's an imaginary. Maybe it's really minus two I issues. They're imaginary issues, not assigned to miles. Uh, so that's it for uh, the core. All right, thank you, Dan. No uh, releases in the last week or so, right? That's right. I might make a beta sometime this week. But All just right. to catch up. Okay. All right. And next, uh, Katni, I just assume that you are all ready to tell us about the libraries. I am. Great. This section applies to all of the Adafruit CircuitPython libraries, which is everything that starts with Adafruit underscore CircuitPython underscore, as well as a couple of extras, such as the community bundle and our cookie cutter. So across all of those repos, we had 16 pull requests merged from nine different authors and five different reviewers. The oldest of the merged PRs was over a month old, so I'm glad we, to see we're still getting through some older PRs. That leaves us with 26 open pull requests. Uh, we had 18 issues closed by eight people and six opened by six people, leaving us with 629 open issues. 198 of those are good first issues. If you are interested in contributing to CircuitPython on the, on the Python side of things, check out circuitpython.org slash contributing. You'll find all of this information and more, including open pull requests, open issues, and library infrastructure issues. Um, with the issues, if you're looking to contribute documentation or code, check out the issue list. A uh, good first issue is a great place to start if you're new to everything. And we have a guide on contributing to CircuitPython using Git and GitHub, so don't let that part intimidate you. We're also always available on Discord to answer questions. If you're interested in reviewing, check out the open uh, PRs and take a look at them. If you have the hardware, test it. If you don't, take a look at syntax, spelling, that sort of thing, and leave a comment. Let us know you looked at it. That's super helpful. And once you're comfortable with that, we can talk about adding you to our review team. In terms of library updates in the last seven days, we have no new libraries, but we have a short list of updated libraries that I will not read, but they are in the notes. And um, a quick thing, I guess, that's kind of fun is we just updated uh, the chat badge and the readmes on all the libraries to our new Adafruit Discord badge. I pointed to Discord already, but um, now we have a little custom badge that says Adafruit Discord and has a little star on it. I'm kind of excited about that. And that's what I've got. Thank you, Katni. And to round out this section, I will invite maker Melissa to give us the Blinka updates. 
Hello. Uh, Blinka is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for uh, the for MicroPython, Raspberry Pi, and other single board computers so that the CircuitPython libraries can run on those boards. And this past week, we had zero pull requests merged. Uh, there are currently four open pull requests. There were zero closed issues by zero people and zero open by zero people, so no activity, uh, leaving a net of 74 open issues. There were 11,172 Pi Wheels downloads in the last month, and we are currently supporting 88 boards, and that's it. All right, and it's not directly going to show up in the numbers on Blinka, but you're working on some pretty exciting stuff with the displays on Raspberry Pi, right? Yes, it's called uh, getting frustrated about writing device tree overlays. <laughs> All right, more about that in status updates. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Melissa. No problem. All right, um, next we come to hug reports. So this is the first of our two round robin sections. And uh, let me just jump to um, my blurb that I'm going to read out. Hug Reports is a chance to highlight folks in the CircuitPython community and beyond for doing awesome things. As mentioned, this section is held as a round robin, where I will start and then we'll go down the list alphabetically. If you're text only or missing the meeting but have Hug Reports in the notes document, I'll read those off as I get to your position in the list. So. Uh, my hug report uh, is first to Lady Ada for always having excellent quests. To Dan for pinging me when I dropped the ball on an MP3 problem, which I didn't put in status updates, but I'll try and remember to talk about it. Katni for doing a bunch of behind the scenes, uh, a bunch of behind the scenes work to prep for PyCon. And lastly, uh, Scott, hey, I hope you're doing well. You're doing an excellent job of not being seen while on paternity leave. And next up is C. Grover, who uh, is just listening in today and has a hug report for Foamy Guy and Naradoc for insightful revision control advice as I began a long delayed quest into Get More Door. Today's release of Foamy Guy's How to Make Pull Requests to Contribute video was particularly timely and helpful. I'm seeking, secretly longing to return to the Shire, however. And uh, with that, it is Dan who's up next. Okay, thanks. So I'd like to thank Curdy and MJS513 who are continuing to work on a lot of fixes for uh, the TNC boards, the i.mx boards. Some of these are specific to TNC and some of them are, are more general to um, the NXP i.mx family. So thank you for that. Thanks to Tetric who's been doing a bunch of documentation and uh, typing fixes both in the core and in libraries. And thanks to you, Jeff, for improvements to RP2040 PIO in a variety of ways, making it more and more useful. Okay. All right, great. Uh, next, I have notes from David Cloud, and up after that is Foamy Guy. So David writes, I've been following in the recordings without contributing to the weekly meeting for months, so group hug because there are too many things to celebrate, such as Liz joining Adafruit, Scott's family extension, Tim for deep dive, and an ellipsis. All right, over to you, Foamy Guy, and then to Jerry. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, hug reports this week. Thank you to Nerdoc. Um, Nerdoc shared a really cool uh, user interface, like web-based user interface that you can run in the browser for um, CircuitPython packaging, um, kind of like pulling all the libraries and stuff, sort of like Circuit, but a, a visual way to see it, which is a really neat project. Um, thank you to Tammy Makes Things for the streams on Twitch, working on CircuitPython and Python development, uh, and then a group hug for everybody else. Thanks. All right. Jerry, uh, go ahead, and then Katni after that. Uh, hi. Uh, yeah, just uh, thanks to uh, Naradoc for uh, being very patiently explaining to me how to access the microbit uh, LED matrix on Discord this morning. All right, uh, after Katni will be K-Match, but go ahead, Katni. All right. This week, I have a hug for Eva for running an Adabot patch to update the library.getignore files to match, um, and running a script to update the chat badge on the libraries to the new Adafruit Discord badge, to Foamy Guy for updating the URL used for the Adafruit Discord badge to the raw URL, so read the docs also rendered it properly. 
um, to Jeff for writing a script to automatically load CircuitPython and flash a directory full of content onto CircuitPy to save me a bunch of time. To Rose for modifying said script to be fancier because that's how she works. And to Brian and Rose, uh, Brian being my housemate, uh, for joining the Flash Party to get CircuitPython and content loaded onto 90 Circuit Player on Blue Fruits in preparation for open spaces at PyCon 2022. Uh, to Rose for helping in general with PyCon prep and a group hug. All right, thank you. Uh, Mega Melissa is on deck, but now Kmatch, what is up? Hey, thanks, Jeff. Got uh, one hug this week. Uh, this is to GitHub user Suda Morris, who I believe is probably on the Espressive uh, development team. Uh, thanks to them and I guess the rest of the team for backporting some fixes to the RGB LCD library uh, back into the version 4.4 of the ESP IDF, which will make it a little bit easier to get it into CircuitPython. So thanks, Suda Morris. Thanks. All right. Uh, after Melissa is Tammy, but go ahead now, Melissa. I wanted to give a hug to GitHub user Bad Seafood for contributing a well-written device tree overlay last year that's uh, working as a great reference uh, to Katni for all the hard work prepping for PyCon and group hug to everyone else. All right. Go ahead, Tammy, and then I have one set of notes to read. Wait just a second for Tammy to come back. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong button. Happens to <laughs> all of us. I just have a group hug for everybody this week. All right, thank you. And to round out the section, Tectric writes, a hug for Naradoc for the fix regarding the edit GitHub link on the CircuitPython API docs. A hug to Ketney for all the neat things that will be at PyCon. Excited to swing by and check it out. And finally, a group hug. So that finishes hug reports, and we will move on to status updates. Status updates is our time to sync up on what we're doing. This section is also held as a round robin. When I call on you, take a couple of minutes to talk about what you've been doing since the last meeting and what you'll be doing until the next meeting. And where it's relevant, this is a great time to provide tips and tricks as long as they're quick. If it is a longer topic that uh, doesn't really fit within status updates, please add a topic to In the Weeds. And anyway, I will start. Uh, so last week, yet again, I'm trying to put the finishing touches on floppies. I still have a little bit left. Um, it has to do with how you count track numbers on all different kinds of floppy drives. It's a little bit dry, but needs to get finished. Um, after Dan pinged me a second time, I worked with a user on the um, Adafruit forums to uh, find a new problem with MP3 decoding, which we believe uh, will be fixed. There's a merge PR and it should be in 730. And then late in the week, I started on a quest to improve the state machine to let it use that new Servo 2040 board from Pimeroni to its full potential. And uh, basically, at Pimeroni, they had invented a very cool way to use one uh, PIO state machine to create up to 32 different uh, PWM outputs. And there was something missing, so you couldn't directly adapt that code into CircuitPython. And I've added the missing piece and kind of done a prototype of the code that you would actually use to control the servos that um, this is in a couple of pull requests on GitHub if you want to know more. Anyway, this week, it's just two and a half days of normal work this week. Then I'm heading to PyCon, as previously mentioned. So I'm trying to fix those items that I just mentioned above. And I started investigating whether to do a rewrite of Adafruit PIO ASM uh, with a goal to fix some um, it accepts some programs that it shouldn't, um, and this tripped me up and I lost some time on it last week, uh, but also these changes might allow us to add uh, calculating the values of expressions, uh, which is in the, the standard PIO assembler from Raspberry Pi, but doesn't work in CircuitPython. Uh, so it's gotten to the point where it handles about four, three or four instructions, and it's already a larger program than the original. So I'm not sure if the size will be an issue, but I'm going to continue uh, playing with that. And it will be an easy thing to do while at PyCon if I have some downtime and just want to write code. Uh, so that's what I'm going to be up to. And so I'm going to read notes from C. Grover in just a moment. And then after that, it's Dan again. So C. Grover writes, I learned enough Git revision control concepts 
to successfully submit an NAU 7802 driver class to the CircuitPython Community Bundle. Congratulations! Uh, in conjunction with a custom Featherwing design, the driver reads sensitive analog load cells for various scale and torque converter projects. Uh, and C. Grover is working on submitting three more driver classes and a collection of helpers to the community bundle. This is not only a good educational experience, but also an opportunity to fine tune some older code with my evolving skill set. As a visual and experiential learner, I'm hoping to codify and document this into a set of process flow diagrams that I can reference for my occasional use in the future. And if you do, I hope you share those with the community because people have yeah, all sorts of different ways that they feel most comfortable learning and help us enable more people to work on CircuitPython. Anyway, uh, Dan, you're up and then I'll read notes from David. Okay, thanks. So um, I've been working for some time on ESP32-S2 I2C problems. There's when you run at 100 kilohertz, um, if you there's a big gap between each I2C transaction, which makes, for instance, controlling a stepper motor through an I2C controller really slow because the steps there are many steps, and if there's a 10 millisecond delay on each one, that just makes the stepper run really slow. So I did a lot of work inside the ESP IDF and sort of found an empirical fix which involves um, inserting a slight delay somewhere place. Uh, I brought this up with, I opened an issue about this in the ESP IDF um, re, um, repo and the official maintainer of I2C stuff looked at it and found a different bug, which fixes an example that I wrote, but doesn't fix it in CircuitPython. So I'm not quite sure what to do at the moment but I'm waiting for that maintainer to submit his fix to the other repo, and I'll try it again. And there are also a lot of other I2C fixes going on in ESP IDF, so it's kind of a mess right now. That brings up the second point, which is there's some there's an ESP32 S3 I2C issue, which is also in process in the ESP IDF repo, and I'm looking at that. And then finally. Um, I have all kinds of NeoPixel strips lying on my desk because I've been doing a lot of testing of NeoPixel timing. And NeoPixel-like things are made by different manufacturers and some of them require slightly different, or not slightly different, quite different timing. So I've been trying to make sure that the timing we have works with everything that we sell. And um, I'm just about there, but the timings are quite different than when they used to be before. They're still good. They're just like not what you'd expect. So I'm working on that. And then hopefully everything will work on everything with Circuit Python eventually. Okay. It seems uh, that some of the common wisdom about NeoPixel driving is not entirely accurate uh, based on our internal discussions. So that's always fun to learn. Anyway, uh, after I read notes from David, I will hand the talking stick to Foamy Guy. Uh, so David writes, last week, converting Wii UDRAW game tablet to Absolute Mouse HID for PC, as seen on Show and Tell. And there is a link to Twitter in the notes doc. Uh, also, mouse emulation using custom standalone USB HID descriptor, rather than using the built-in composite descriptor. My proof of conference demonst proof of <laughs> proof of concept demonstrates how to use a Wii UDRAW tablet with the Nintendo Switch. And... Their current project is emulating a mouse to automate texture drawing on the game Builder Garage, a Switch game that allows you to create your own games. All right, Foamy Guy, we are ready for you. And then after that, it will be Katni. All right, thanks, Jeff. Um, last week, I created a sprite button class that uh, allows you to make buttons, uh, display I.O. based buttons with uh, any arbitrary bitmap that you want. So we can have some fancier buttons now. Um, I made a PR for that in the display button library, but it was previously just a single file, so I also uh, refactored it to be a, a package, and then um, Pylint complained about some of the code being copied, so I also uh, made a base class to try to put all of the common stuff in the base class, and then uh, the subclasses now have their, their separate behaviors. Um, 
is one of the things that I worked on that, that kind of went into that button was this uh, tile grid inflator, which I've made a, a PR for now over in image load. This basically allows you to take a, uh, a, a relatively small three by three sprite sheet and then um, inflate it up to a bigger size tile grid. Um, so the button is based on that and I have a couple other widgets that are in the works that will use that as well. Um, I, uh, as was mentioned earlier, I made a couple of automation scripts to update the uh, URL in uh, a URL in the readme file for the Discord badge uh, due to some differences in the way that GitHub and Read the Docs are able to render images, essentially. Um, earlier today, I published a YouTube video that demonstrates how to make PRs for CircuitPython libraries. Um, Going into this week, a couple of the things I have uh, on my list are looking back into making a, uh, a little draft notif uh, notification uh, badge or something like that on um, the contributing page on circuitpython.org for the PRs. So it will some you know it will draw something to signify which ones are draft PRs and which ones are uh, just plain open, ready for review. Um, I think I've figured out where that data comes from, and I've also, I think, figured out the template where it uh, gets rendered into the page, and I just need to get my Adabot environment set up so that I can actually start tweaking the uh, the data that's in there. Um, I Another thing I want to do this week is uh, work on some touch interaction in the tab layout. I, uh, I started making the tab layout, I think, a week or two ago, and it's, it's also kind of based on this tile grid inflator, so it was one of the first things I used that for. Uh, but I need to go back and do the touch interaction for it and then get the code cleaned up and get ready to make a PR for that. Uh, and then the uh, the last thing I have uh, that I know of so far, at least, is uh, got a couple PRs that I'm going to be testing out later this afternoon. Uh, one of them is uh, sharp display stuff, which I haven't uh, set up or used before, so I'm excited to kind of play with a new type of display uh, to test out some of that stuff. That's what I got. Thank you. Um, next up is Katni, and after that is Kmatch. All right, so last week I published the Feather ESP32 S3 guide um, and jumped into testing PyLeap, uh, which is an app that allows you to transfer uh, projects, project code, to either a circuit playground Bluefruit or a Clue are the boards that are supported at the moment, um, with it just plugged into power, so not plugged into your computer. Um, it works on iOS. Anyway, a um, little background there, but I uh, tested all the projects to make sure they load both on Clue and Circuit Playground Bluefruit. Uh, Trevor's our iOS dev. I worked with him to get the bugs to get bugs fixed and then tested the bug fixes. And I added a new project to PyLeap using the new process, which is submitting the project via a JSON file that is um, kept on GitHub. And um, PyLeap just picks up that, that new project. Um, and that's used to be you had to go in to learn and enable it and that sort of thing. And it was not very um, public friendly because we want folks to be able to add to this um, who are not necessarily in the Adafruit Learn system. So I tested that out as well and it worked as expected. And uh, PyCon prep. So this week um, I need to finish testing PyLeap. Um, there is a new test flight with the latest um, updates and I need so I need to test that I need to get through as much as possible before leaving for PyCon um, which is easy and difficult test flights uh, the release cycle on those is, is sort of under Apple's control so you can't just make a test flight and have it immediately show up um, it could be anywhere from 1 to 24 hours so I won't be able to test a new um, version of it this week I don't think um, but I can make sure that the bugs that I filed have been addressed or at least um, added to the upcoming test flight. And then more PyCon prep. And then on Wednesday, I leave for PyCon. Um, giving a talk at the Education Summit, which is before the conference. I'm running a mini sprint at the Education Summit. I'm hosting open spaces daily. I say me, we are hosting open spaces daily during the conference. And then Melissa and I are hosting two days of development sprints after the conference. Um, this past weekend was a lot of PyCon prep, including flashing CircuitPython on content onto 90 Circuit Playground Blue Fruits, um, counting out and packaging up 80 USB micro cables because I realized um, we can't expect folks to have those anymore because most technology does not use USB micro, it's USB C um, or Lightning, obviously. So um, 
whereas previously we could expect folks to have those cables, we, we can't really do that this year. Uh, and since Blue Fruit is micro, um, and that's what we'll be working with, I wanted to have cables available. And a bunch of other smaller things that happened. Um, there's still a lot left to do, but I got a couple days to do it, so we should be good to go. And looking forward to seeing anybody who is going to PyCon. Um, look for us, look for our open spaces, come by and say hi. Um, and I guess that's what I've got. Thank you. That's a lot as per usual. Uh, all right, Kmatch and then Maker Melissa. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Uh, not too much progress this week due to some house projects that materialized and work as well. Uh, the main thing I'm doing is trying to prepare my thoughts on a feature request into the Espressive IDF, uh, in particular uh, related to the RGB LCD display. Uh, I want, or based on CircuitPython's allocation of all the PS RAM uh, in advance, basically I need a function of of their init function to be able to accept a pre-allocated frame buffer. So I am just want to make sure that works like I think it should and propose how that might work uh, the theme there. So that's the main thing this week, uh, but nothing else planned until other things settle down. Hey, thanks. Uh, thank you. Um, so after Mega Melissa, we will have Tammy and then some notes to read. So go ahead, Melissa. Uh, OK. Uh, last week, I was working on a script to install the new MIPI driver and uh, figuring out all the offsets and the rotations, especially for the ST7789 uh, displays. Uh, this week, I uh, i mean, I'm sorry. The next item I did was I worked on a device tree overlay for a touchscreen driver for the STMPE touchscreen controllers. And I didn't quite get that working yet. I think I'm actually really close. And I started working on a device tree overlay for the TSC 2007. And this week I'm going to try and wrap up the touchscreen device tree overlays and... Do a little bit of PyCon prep, and then I'll be heading out and going to PyCon uh, later. And so I'll be attending and also working with Katnu on her talk, uh, the workshop in open spaces. And uh, looking forward to meeting you, Jeff. Thank you. All and right. That's it. Uh, all right. Then, Tammy, it looks like you've got a good list of stuff going on. What's up? So last week, I only did one Twitch stream. I was hoping to do two, but I just started a new job. And so things have been a little bit um, hectic. Um, that would be a nice word for that. And so this week, I'm hoping to do two or maybe even three Twitch streams. I'm still working on my CircuitPython card deck library. And now that we're seeing more and more boards that have lots of flash, I'm hoping to get back to my fix for the pick you tool so that it works properly on those boards. Um, that's what I'm hoping on <clears throat> getting done today I'm, or this week. I'm also expecting significant FOMO around not being at PyCon, but hopefully next year. So we'll see how that goes. And that's what I got. All right. Thank you. And to finish out the session, I will read the notes from Tectric. Last week, mostly packing up my things and moving them to a new apartment. So it was a light week. Addressing some long-term documentation issues in the core. Thank you. Adding more typing protocols to CircuitPython typing to aid in a few type annotations for libraries and a few random bug fixes. This week is PyCon 2022 and unboxing the things I just boxed. And finally, probably a few type annotations during the flight and downtime. And that concludes status updates. Next up would be in the weeds, but we don't have any topics, so I will move to wrapping up the meeting. So this has been the CircuitPython Weekly for April 25th, 2022. Um, our next meeting is at the usual time on Monday, May 2nd at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time. So we hope to see you there, although I will be missing it. Um, so yeah, thank you to everybody who participated today, and thank you to everybody who listened in. Uh, we really appreciate that you're interested in what we're up to. Uh, to support Adafruit and CircuitPython, and those of us that work on CircuitPython, consider purchasing from the shop at adafruit.com. 
The video of this meeting uh, goes on YouTube at youtube.com slash Adafruit, and we also put the podcast on most major podcast services. It will also be featured in the Python for Microcontrollers newsletter. Visit adafruitdaily.com to subscribe. Um, this meeting is held on the Adafruit Discord, which you can join at any time by going to adafru.it slash discord. We have people in just about every continent and time zone, so uh, come by and talk to us about your projects, and then join us on Mondays for the meeting. Um, to be notified about the meeting and the changes to the time or day, you can ask to be added to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord, which is also a must when you want to participate in the meeting by speaking in the voice channel. All right, I think that really wraps it up. Uh, hope we'll see most of y'all next week. Thanks again, everybody. Thanks, everyone.